Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Quadratic Functions Lesson Unit Lesson Number 1 of Quadratic Functions Review, Hogue Review, Part 3. And if you got a chance, can you make sure to catch the first two. And if you have any questions, please give them, uh, put them in the comment section below or any comments that you think might be helpful uh, or, you know, just anything that might be helpful to the channel. Uh, and of course, if you find any of the videos helpful, please give it a like. We would really appreciate it. Number seven, the number of meters above the ground H of a projectile fired at initial velocity of 86 meters per second and initial height of 6.2 meters is given by H of T equals negative 4.9 T squared plus 86T plus 6.2, where T represents the time in seconds since the projectile was fired. If the projectile hits its peak height at T equals 8.775 seconds, which the following is closest to its greatest height? Okay, so the idea is that we see here is a, it's a quadratic uh, function and therefore have the shape of parabola. And we also know that because of the fact that the, the uh, A value is negative, the shape of the graph is going to be something similar to this. Okay, and the highest point will be here, all right? It's going to basically, the highest point to be at the vertex. They tell us in this case that it reaches the highest point at, at uh, 8.775 seconds, all right? And so with that, what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into our formula and be able to solve, all right? So... You guys, guys want to put out calculators here, all right? And I'm just going to write some stuff down because instead of flipping back and forth, which is kind of annoying. All right, so here we go, all right? And 8.775 8 seconds. All right, so here we go, calculator here, all right? And so we're going to type in, and then remember it was negative 4.9, so negative, oops, not a decimal, oh, wrong button. Here we go, negative 4.9. Now, when we type it in, I use parentheses here, all right? And the number we're typing in is 8.775, uh, close parentheses, and square this, okay? Again, we're typing in the time to figure out the height because the, the, they gave us the formula, the height, okay? This is the formula of negative 4.9t squared times plus 86t, so plus 86, and again, I'm going to use parentheses here uh, for to put the number around, point. 8775, close parenthesis, and then plus 6.2. All right. And so after you plug this in, we're going to get a value of 383.5469375. Well, okay. So this will be the maximum height because it reaches maximum height at 8.775 seconds. And that rounds up to about 384, and that's where our answer is going to be, 384 meters. So for this one, we just kind of plug into our form, uh, to our, just plug in time into our, our uh, onto our equation here, and we'll find the height. Physics students were modeling the height of a ball once it was dropped from the roof of a 25-story building. The students found that the height in feet h of the ball above the ground is a function of number of seconds t since the drop was given by h of t equals 300 minus 16 t squared. So the height is going to be, you know, at any time t is 300 minus 16 t squared, all right? And so before I drop the ball, the t at the time that before I drop the ball will be t equals zero. So what's the height when t equals zero? So when the ball is dropped, t equals before is dropped, t equals zero. So h of zero, the height will be 300 minus 16 times zero squared, which is just going to be 300 feet. All right, now why t equals zero? It's almost like you're holding the ball and you're about to let go. So that's the height the ball is at from where it's dropped. There is from the drop from the roof of a 25 story building, which in this case they equated to be 300 feet. Now, to the nearest second, tenth of a second, determine the time at which the ball hits the ground. 
Well, to provide evidence from a table, support your answer, or solves algebraically if you recall how to. Well, here's the thing. When the ball hits the ground, the height will be not 300, but zero. Okay, so what we want to do is set this equal to zero. So zero is equal to 300 minus 16 t squared. So now I'm solving for solving for t. Let me scroll this down a little bit, give us a little room here. I'm going to add 16 t squared to both sides. I just like having positives. So now I have 16 t squared is equal to 300. I'm going to divide both sides by 16. So that means in this case, t squared equals 300 over 16. And then I'm going to take the square root of this. Now, I'll have a positive number, a negative number, but since we cannot go back in time, t will equal to 3 square root of 300 over 16. And you're saying, why don't you simplify that, Mr. Gog? Oh, uh, you know what? I have a calculator. And so what I'll do is I'll just type my calculator, all right? And so we're going to do square root, square root of 300 divided by 16. They asked to approximate this to the nearest tenth of a second. So we see here, the calculator will do this for me, 4.330. So it looks like in this case, to the nearest tenth of a second would be 4.3 seconds. Right? So the nearest tenth of a second, t is approximately 4.3 seconds. And make sure you include the units too, because numbers by themselves don't really mean anything. You have basically the context of the problem there. So, okay. And there you go. I'll make this full page here. So keep in mind when we have these problems, a lot of times problems are going to be either A, you know, at the highest point, what's the highest value? So you, a lot of times that's why the axis symmetry is really helpful. Uh, here we didn't have to find it though, but it is important to know that at the axis symmetry, it will give you the time when you reach the highest point and you can plug in they'll find the y value to find what the highest point is and of course they also have when uh, when starting points t equals zero okay and of course when the height is zero you try to solve for t just set h equals zero though okay i hope it's helpful all right i know it's like oh my goodness all physics problems but it's the application though we you know with science math is the language that science uses to interpret these things. So I think that's one of the ways I see it as. So math and science are, are, are related, you know, in a lot of ways because the, you know, trying to, trying to figure out these things, you know, math, you know, science is math. But in this case, the math and science to give, give it context. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. This is our final video of, so our, of our Algebra 2 Quadratic Functions Unit, Lesson Number 1, Quadratic Function Review, Homework Review, Part 3. That's a mouthful. If you found this helpful, please give a like. And again, I look forward to seeing you, to, see you guys in the next video. Please leave your questions or comments in the comment section below. All right, and you know what? If you can, in the comment section below, why don't you tell me in this case, if there is a favorite science class you have, or whether or not you, you feel, which, you know, a lot of times I say, well, which one do you like more, math or science? But a lot of times the students go, I don't like either one of them. So I'll say in this case, which do you hate less, <laughs> math or science? All right, in any case, ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to hear from you guys. Take care, see you soon.